not allowing his guys to get a chance to be scared. Last time out, he said, hey, fellas, we've proven we can play with them. It's two teams on equal footing now. Let's go play. Let's get back to Jimmy. Leitner hits the front end of the one-and-one. One. Is the intimidation factor over with for Duke? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. As a matter of fact, I, I think that Duke came out not intimidated from the beginning. Six-point lead for the Devils. Don't leave Hunt open. Exactly. You know, Hunt is going to flatten out to that position, and you have to run right to him in the beginning because they'll find him, whether it be Johnson or Anthony. They know where he is over there. Back to the man-to-man. -man. I think it's time to get Leitner the ball out at the top. There he is. But Spencer will back off a yeah, little bit. He Res won't, he, respect he his he, ability. He can't handle him there. Leaning in. Spencer snaps the rebound. Hogman. Nice defense by Grant Hill. Greg Anthony with a man on him. Oh, still boy. hits the top. What a half. Three. What a half, Jim. 12 points for Anthony. The game is tied at 37. Timeout on the court. The game is tied once again. When he was for his second technical, I really feel bad for Dean Smith. I thought he was showing up at the end of that game. Although I know the replay is going to show he was out of the coach's box. Two ticky-tack technicals on the legend, and he was tossed out at the end of the game. And here we see back to the man-to-man. -man. Larry Johnson now guarding Leitner as Jerry Tarkane decides to go small. First time he hasn't had either Spencer or Ackles in the game. The lineup for Duke includes Hurley and Thomas Hill. Hill will take the shot. Had an open shot. Bouncing around, last touch by UNLV. How about Gray going up on the boards that time to keep it alive? McCaffrey, Leitner, and Hurley, along with Thomas Hill and Grant Hill. Oh, Anthony, Anthony, another great play. Got the steal, tipped it back to Hoffman, and a little showtime at the other end. Boy, he's played with a broken jaw. He's played with all kinds of problems in his hands. Tark told us he'd make a great boxer. Feels no pain. Has the quickest reflexes he's ever seen. Greg Anthony. He's on fire offensively now. Nice pass. Boy, did uh, Larry Johnson fall for that fake. Yeah, particularly with McCaffrey, who's not going to be quick enough to blow by him. Anthony off the hands of Altman. That's twice inside. Same kind of situation. Well, you know what happened in... Augman realized it was his fault. He saw Larry Johnson breaking from the other side, and he was going to make the pass before he caught the ball. Lost a little concentration there. Still a low number of turnovers, really, in this first half. Five for each team. Thomas Hill. That's swatted away by Augman. Four on two. Johnson. Again, Augman had a hard time handling it, and Duke will get it back. But of course, I have a defensive player of the year last year, one of the leading candidates, if not going to be the winner again this year. Excellent shot blocker as well as a guy that can stop ball penetration. Hurley left open. In between Swish and Bank, and he went right between them. Hunt, so dangerous, in and out. Hill with the rebound. UNLV contesting a lot of rebounds down on the inside, putting some physical hands on the Duke players. Leitner. Anthony fell to the floor trying to draw the charge. That was such a soft shot on the baseline, almost behind the board. Has almost half their points. 20 of the 41 for Leitner. Well, I think back of the great game he has a freshman against Georgetown. East Regional Final. Look at that. Way up off the glass. And they say it was touched. Take it away, offensive goaltender. Uh, Gray just tried to funnel it down inside. Took away another sensational play by Anthony. We're seeing All-American display by Leitner. And there's no question about the call. The ball was in the cylinder and touched. But we're also seeing one of the best guard performances I've seen in a long time from Greg Anthony. Grant Hill takes it all the way. Too strong. Better find Hunt. How about Gray? Oh, oh did Grant you see Hill. Grant Hill? Yep. Yeah. And, and Anthony's getting up slow. He really took a shot. Grant Hill popped him. And to be 
be honest with you, Jim, Grand Hill, if that were seen by the officials, should be out of the game. But what was happening is Vegas was taking a lot of shots at the Duke guys. He may have been down for the eight count, but Richard Steele is not officiating this game. So this one still goes on. Hurley turns it over. Yeah, Hurley is wanting to get some help on the drive. If they're not going to call that foul, Bobby Hurley has to look to sit down a little bit after he makes his dribble penetration and make the pass. Game tied, final 30 seconds of the half. Where's the I, next milestone will be? How will Duke face that second half blitz you talked about, Billy, is one of your Packer points. Well, Vegas has only been behind at halftime once this year, and that was against Arkansas. Duke, as we know, 26-0 when they lead at halftime. Anthony. Again high off the glass. Dangerous pass here. Still two seconds to work with. They try to set up Johnson. And the half is here. UNLV by two. Excellent half of basketball. The end of the first half, the score. UNLV 43, Duke 41. Cut off a shot. Let's see what happens here. Teen to nothing run against Seton Hall in that West Final. And the man usually in this spot has been Larry Johnson. We had 10 of the 14 on that run against Seton Hall. Oh, nice give and go. Get away. Duke says you're not going to do it. Jerry Tarkanian took his towel and wanted to throw it in the stands on that one. He doesn't want to see a team execute a play like that against what he thinks is a vaunted defense. Kubek just hanging around with Johnson. Altman not as sharp as he normally is today. Thomas Hill with the rebound. Get the ball to Johnson down low with Kubek on him. Nice job by Leitner to come out and meet the pass. No way. Thomas Hill and Duke has the lead in the second half. Hunt right back with a three. Now, what, ha what happened there, Jim, is, is you have Thomas Hill is being played by Anthony. So he takes him down in the low post. When he's down in the low post, what happens is Anderson Hunt runs down to his spot-up position, and somebody will have to take Anderson Hunt because there's no way for Hill to go 90 feet to catch him. Duke led for about two seconds. And here's a steal, almost. Hurley gets it well, back. People are going to have to come and meet the pass here. UNLV cutting off all of the plays, and Hurley picks up his dribble. So if nobody comes to meet the ball, there's no way for him to throw it. Here's a stat for you, Billy. Uh, in the second half of games this year, UNLV's only trailed in two other occasions, Michigan State and Arkansas, but a total of one minute and 20 seconds in over 11 hours of action. And here comes Hunt. Breakaway time. Excellent defense by UNLV and poor execution by Duke. Not to set the screen and step out to get that inbound pass. Three-point Vegas lead. And they're staying man-to-man -man here at the start of the second half. That's Vegas' largest lead of the game. Boy, they are really cutting off the dribble now. A little too tight a hand check, they say, by Augman, his first. Well, I'm really impressed the way Grant Hill is playing in this game, Jim. And as we mentioned last week, he was having a lot of problems. He's playing with a lot of confidence out here today. I still maintain that opening tip basket. Had him brimming with confidence. Hey. There he is. He's playing like a veteran. One of the truly outstanding freshmen in the country. And that is on Ackles, his fourth. And this year, after a loss at Duke, where Mike Krzyzewski did not feel his team played well, he brought them back in the bus, got off the bus, and said, fellas, we're going to practice. They practiced, and Grant Hill took one in the nose, got a broken nose, and missed a number of games. Took him a while to come back from that. Third year in a row, Coach Krzyzewski has had a key freshman in the starting lineup. Last year it was Hurley, the year before that it was late. Three-point play by Hill. And an interesting move by Jerry Tarkanian. It's not Spencer. Tarkanian goes small, which means that he's going to match Leitner up with Johnson. Hogman has it taken away. Would he finish?
finish the break, or, or, or would he wait for his teammates and pull it out? Well, I think tremendous strategy by Mike Krzyzewski here in terms of any time they could push the ball up the court, they're doing it. Bobby Hurley sets his sight on that goal just as Anderson Hunt does when he goes on that break and converts a beautiful play. The Duke team, which over the last six years have, have averaged turning the ball over 20 times by their opponents, get a big one there. Three-point lead for Duke. That man, Ackles, saddled with four fouls. Now you'd have to say the matchup in man-to-man -man favors Duke a little bit. That's a little too aggressive for Leitner, his second. By the way, Billy, Duke started the game five for five from the floor. Now they're four for four in this half. Now look at how Larry Johnson posts up down low. Has incredible body strength and gets Christian Leitner on the back. Leitner can do nothing. Inbounds. And that ball was not goaltending because it had no chance to go in. And Hill is hurt. Hill is down. Gets to his feet, but the basket is made. And you see whose man that is. That is Thomas Hill's man. Anderson Hunt, who hits the jumper. He's in some serious pain here. Gets twisted around. Just got his back twisted around. Boy, did he go up in the air. You can see right there is where he gets twisted. And goes down and stays down, and while he's on the floor, Anderson Hunt is spotting up at his patented three-point area and just buries another three-pointer. And, and the three by Hunt ties the game. Hunt with 18 points, eight already in this half with only two and a half minutes to play in the second half. It's amazing, Jim, how patient he is to stand out in that three-point area knowing his teammates being so unselfish will eventually find him. And he's always squared up when he shoots that jumper and has the perfect release. They're keeping Thomas Hill right down on the floor. Now on his feet for Thomas Hill, Duke. This gives Christian Leitner an opportunity to get a breath. We talked about how in the first half, Jerry Tarkanian tried to use both big men to wear him down. Leitner had a great first half with 20 points, and he's out there now going to be matched up probably a good portion of the rest of this night with Larry Johnson on both ends of the floor. We have had nine ties in this game and 15 lead changes. 51-51. Remember, Oklahoma-Kansas, 50-50 first half, 88. Championship game. That was the halftime score. Augman battles later. You may have heard Larry Johnson. He didn't like the call. Hurley will inbound. They make it tough to get that ball to bounce. Good job by Dan. Slashes to the hole, came up way short. Oh, they called goaltending. Now that's the second time today that Gray won an offensive goaltending. And this second one, I believe this shot would have been a little short. Oh, it, was, it just looked yep. like it fell off his hand. Exactly. I don't have, think it had any chance to go in. I'm not even sure it would have gotten to the rim. Right. Duke back in front. Third team all season to lead UNLV in the second half. Joining Arkansas and Michigan State. Kubek has got to help out there for Leitner. He's going to pick up some foul trouble inside. Leitner gets the steal. Denies the entry. Early wanting to go over the top of Larry Johnson. And what happened is Augustus coming from the weak side. Kubek missing. Look at where Hunt is. He's... Davis, nice play to reach in and take it out of the hands of Gray. About the first tough judgment that Anthony made today. He had no passing angle there on the break. Anderson Hunt wanted the ball on the sideline there for a three. The winner of this game plays Kansas Monday night for the championship. Crawford Palmer back in, Kubek out. Nice move by Mike Krzyzewski. That puts Palmer on Johnson and allows Leitner to, to guard Gray and stay out of foul trouble. Jerry Tarkanian, bringing the brilliant strategist he is, said, no, I'm not going to let you have a, an off day here. He comes back with Spencer, so Leitner has to guard somebody in the low post. Anthony, sensational day. His third offensive rebound. But he misses two. And it's off UNLV. 
You can see what UNLV is doing. They're crashing everybody to the boards. Duke has got to take advantage with some long passes for fast breaks. Solid screen coming up for Hurley. Hurley weaving around. Like a Missing a jumper. Yeah, tough shot. Augman looking for the break opportunity. Johnson on a wing. Hunt. Nice drive. Well, you can't fault Davis on that because he realized the toss was going to come back for Anderson Hunt who beat him with a dribble, and you can't you can't take away everything. Hunt had 29 against Duke in last year's title game to claim the MVP honors of the Final Four. He has 20 in this one. Robert Palmer way too high, but the foul is called on Anthony. Now and, he and hurt he his hurt, hand. Yes, he hurt his hand again, and he's just going to sit back. Most guys would not have even played with that injury. He'll battle back. Sure he will. UNLV and Duke dueling it out. They wondered all. And, now. and Jim, they've handled that onslaught of immediately coming out the start of the second half. Oh, Leitner, not. We saw Freddie Brown pass oh. all over again. Went right into the hands of Hunt, and he falls. Hunt falls on his and arm. Remember the elbow. shoulder. Remember Hunt's shoulder problem, which he re aggravated in an auto injury this week. Leitner just got mixed up. Threw it right in the hands of Hunt. Exactly. It was a Freddie Brown play. You can see Hunt fearlessly going in there, and you can see he comes down on that shoulder. Anderson very hot out there. Feel that he was undercut. Boy, these are tough kids mentally and physically. So McCaffrey is uh, called on the foul. Hunt regroups and goes to the line. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm sure that the UNLV players are gaining some respect for the courage of the Duke players as well, Jim. And that's one thing we knew about this team, and Mike Krzyzewski's told us all year. This club is a tougher team physically and mentally than the one he brought to the final field last year. You remember yesterday, Kansas watching everyone else practice? Well, now they're leaving the locker room, showered and dressed, and, uh, well, they're going to go back, heading to the bus. Hunt makes one out of two. He has all 11 points in this half for the running Rebels. And he is fired up. The intensity level in his eyes right now to go after Bobby Hurley is unbelievable. Oh, that's going to be intentional. Away from the action. They call it on Augman. That'll be two and the ball. Two in the ball on a on Augman, and now McCaffrey wants to go to the line. A very outstanding free throw shooter. I believe Davis is the one that should be up there, however. Two shots for Brian Davis. And Duke will have possession. That's Duke's first miss from the line in this game. Eight out of nine. Well, Davis, a 74% free throw shooter. And of course, McCaffrey, an outstanding free throw shooter at 84%. This one would tie it. Tied at 54. It's interesting, Jim, how much more difficult it is to shoot free throws when there's nobody down on the lane. You know, all by yourself out there. A lonely, lonely feeling. Hunt, great steal. You know, Duke has had terrible problems today getting the ball in bounds and out of bounds situations. Hunt misses the jumper. Davis right into his arms for the rebound. Looking to go long. Swings it over to Hurley. Now McCaffrey. Leitner walk got by with a nice dish. Beautiful pass. He wrapped it around the defender right into the arms of Davis for the bucket. Oh, a steal by McCaffrey. Two players on the floor. Palmer helped force it. Davis will challenge. And tried to put it up with the left hand. Not a good idea. Bad angle. Yep. Hunt oh. slashes. Oh, misses. Palmer with a couple of big plays. Yes, and a good job by Bobby Hurley to slow things down a little bit. And Larry Johnson gives the fist. He's tired. He wants to come out of this one. And Ackles gets off the bench. 
to check in for him. It's going to be a war of, of wills here. And Jim, remember what we said at the top of the show, pressure points. There will come a time in this game if UNLV doesn't get a good run going here that they'll start looking at that clock. We're talking about immortality here, an opportunity to tie UCLA in one of the great streaks of all time, an undefeated national championship. A lot of pressure going to build. McHenry draws the foul. Talk about pressure points. They're dealing with unknown territory in a close game down the stretch. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Jim, a couple of the guards for UNLV are a little bit banged up. Anderson Hunt's been flexing his right hand and, of course, his left shoulder. He aggravated this week after he hurt it against Seton Hall. Greg Anthony has that perennial, his, the ring finger on his left hand that uh, he's been icing over here during the timeout. Jim? Do you remember last year, Bobby Hurley having to run back and forth to the to the bathroom? Right, had the flu, in all fairness to the young man who did not have a good Final Four last year, but he has certainly played well today. And I don't believe he's been out of the game, has he, Jim? No, he's gone the whole way. Yep. Today, it's UNLV's guards feeling a, a little bit beat up and blue. Caffrey, an excellent free throw shooter. Has a funny rotation for a good shooter, but varies them normally. Three-point Duke lead. Anthony on the floor doing a little Harlem Globetrotter act. Obviously not walking because he kept the dribble alive. And with Johnson out, Duke getting very aggressive with their man-to-man. Hurley's -man. on the foul, score the basket. And Anthony gives him a glaring stare as Hurley's on the floor right after the basket. And everybody's being tested right now in regard to the wheels. You can't ask for any better defense by Bobby Hurley, and you can't ask for any better offense by Greg Anthony. See Hurley moving those feet very well. Anthony just goes up on him and then hesitates using his chest to go ahead and fend off the defender. And look at that follow through. Right on down to Bobby Hurley's face. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him the uh, icy glare for about three seconds. First player other than Hunt to score in this half, and the three-point play ties it at 57. What a game we're having. Second part of our national semifinals, the winner plays Kansas. And back to the Amoeba defense. Some pretty good shooters on the floor right now for Duke. McCaffrey being one of them. There he is. He's over the line. That's a two-pointer. Yep. Had both feet right on the line. Yep. Good job by Hurley to recognize that he had him flattened out on the side. Anthony. In and out. And Grant Hill barks as he makes the rebound. He's having a big day. On the way. Oh, left hand. Huh. Sensational play. Larry Johnson sitting on the sidelines ready to come back in. And there's a quiet Stacy Ardman. Spencer tried to dunk the follow. Jim, you know, everybody has talked about Mike Krzyzewski and his incredible record in the NCAA tournament. He has lost four out of the last five years to the national champion, eventual national champion. Some stretch. The only team he uh, failed to, to lose to that didn't go on to win it was to Seton Hall in 89 after That's Michigan right. beat Seton Hall in the final. An air ball free throw by Spencer. 86, he lost to Louisville. 87 to Indiana, not in the Final Four, but lost to the eventual champ. 88, of course, to Kansas. And 90 last year to UNLV. Johnson in now for the shooter, Elmore Spencer. Good job by Elmore to make the second one. It's, you're talking about pressure, Billy. You, you airball the first one. Well, Ackles back in, too, with four. You're right, Jim. Uh, he... He buried the second one, looked very good at doing it. Back to aggressive man-to-man -man with a starting team now on the floor for UNLV with arrested Larry Johnson. And Ackles also arrested. So they should pick up some defense here. Duke has all of its starters except for Thomas Hill, who was out. McCaffrey in. McCaffrey comes up short. He got pushed by Larry Johnson on the play. What